welcome you to this episode of D2 Tuesday. We are in March, ladies and gentlemen. Conference play is in full swing. And we got a lot of news to share with you. We're going to talk about it today. My name is Victor Anderson. You know where you can find us on our In The Circle YouTube channel. You know where you can find our podcast. Rate us review us five stars. A lot to get to, folks. So let's get right into it. We learned from our last episode that there will be another Division II school uh, that will uh, no longer be in existence. Uh, Notre Dame College, which currently plays in the Mountain East Conference, announced that they will be um, suspending uh, their college after the spring semester. Uh, that means that Notre Dame College athletic department will be shuttered at the end of this academic year. Uh, the Mountain East Conference uh, Commissioner Reed Amos had a statement about the news uh, that came out on Thursday. Uh, the father said the following, On behalf of the Mountain East Conference, we are deeply saddened by today's announcement that Notre Dame College will conclude in-person instruction at the end of the 2024 spring semester, bringing a more than century-old tradition of higher education to a close. As a charter member of the league, we would like to thank Notre Dame College for its steadfast membership and its numerous contributions that have enhanced the MEC over our first 11 years. Notre Dame's colleges, student-athletes, coaches, and administrators have enjoyed significant success within the conference, region, and nationally, including numerous NCAA postseason appearances. We thank NDC student-athletes for their commitment to their respective sport in our league. We also express our gratitude for the dedication and support of the coaches, institutional administrators, and staff in the athletic department. While we acknowledge the effects of our membership change, our focus will be on extending both our support and sympathy to those who will face a loss of employment and students who will need to transition to a different academic opportunity. Uh, this marks the second time uh, that we have learned a D2 school uh, will be uh, shuttering uh, its doors. The College of St. Rose, uh, during our inaugural, one of our first inaugural episodes of D2 Tuesday, they announced earlier in the year that they will conclude in-person instruction in the end of the spring semester as well. Uh, right now, the Falcons are currently in the midst of their Florida swing, so I'm sure that was uh, certainly uh, stunning news for those young ladies to learn. Uh, they're currently 4-4 four and four on the season. Uh, they are right now playing in the spring games. They are playing Goldie Beacom in Dominican today. They'll take on Minnesota Duluth, Southwest Minnesota State, Edinburgh, Tiffin, Slippery Rock, and St. Michael's to round out their time in the Sunshine State before they return home uh, to Normandy Field for doubleheader versus Mercy Hurst. They will begin, uh, which will now be their final season, of the NMEC versus West Liberty at a doubleheader in West Virginia on March 16th before they go to Wheeling on the 17th. Their final home games, which I'm sure will be emotional for all people involved, uh, will be March 26th versus Wheeling. That's going to be their designated senior day. The final home games will be on April 27th versus West Liberty and then the Mountain East Tournament. Uh, it, it's never... It's never easy to see young women um, have opportunities uh, be taken away from them. And not only for just the softball program, but the institution as a whole. A lot of people now have to find different jobs. A lot of people made their living being at Notre Dame College, whether it's as a coaching role, in a faculty role, uh, or just a regular everyday worker at the institution. And going back to the softball perspective, there are now a lot of young women who are wondering if this is going to be it for them in terms of their playing career after this year. And here's the other thing that hurts for me uh, more so than anything. You have nine, you have a start, you have 14 freshmen who just joined this program. And now in one year, they have to look for somewhere else to go. 
Uh, it is. I'm I'm heartbroken for them. Um, I'm heartbroken for Coach Kelsey Stop, uh, Coach Assistant Coach Donald Coleman, Sam Robertson, and for all of these young women who now are realizing that they are the final iteration of Notre Dame softball. This is it for them in 2024. So I expect this team, who, by the way, last year accounted for themselves very well, went 31-27, and 27, uh, won two elimination games in the Mountain East tournament before falling to eventual tournament champion uh, Charleston, um, 8 to nothing in five innings. I expect Notre Dame College to come out and be playing with their – the coaches say play like there's no tomorrow. Well, for this program, there is going to be no tomorrow for them. The history of their program started in 1989. They, they became the fourth sport of the institution. Uh, in 2009, they won the America Mideast Regular Season and Tournament Championship, where they were members of the NAIA. They won three consecutive American Mideast Conference Tournament titles and bids to the NAIA Tournament between 2009 and 2011. They became a Division II member uh, prior to the 2013 season. They were an independent program before they joined the Mountain East. They made a conference tournament every year, won the conference tournament title in 2015. They made a similar run to what Charleston did in last year, having to win five straight elimination games. The Falcons actually won six elimination games. Uh, to be to make the NCAA tournament, which is their only trip uh, to the D2 tournament uh, in program history. So, Notre Dame College, we our hearts, our sympathies for you and your young ladies. Make sure you leave this. Make sure you make sh- <clears throat> easy for me to speak to talk with all of this news going on today. Make sure that you leave an indelible image on this program, and I'm hopeful. That your last season is one that ends in the NCAA tournament. Because that will be a phenomenal story to talk about and share uh, with our fans here on D2 Tuesday. Another conference who will get themselves rolling is Conference Carolinas. Now, Conference Carolinas tweeted at In The Circle SB last week before that week's episode of D2 Tuesday. They hey. We play some pretty good softball over here, too. And I say, okay, stay tuned. We got something for you. And, yep, here we are. Conference Carolinas, we're talking about them. Now, Conference Carolinas, they're the they're a very unique conference in that they have three divisions. They have the Eastern Division with Mount Olive, who we highlighted their record-setting weekend a couple about last month on D2 Tuesday. Francis Marion, who are the defending Conference Carolina Tournament Champions, Bar in UNC, Pembroke, and Showen. Then you have the Northeast with King, Belmont Abbey, Converse, and Lise McRae. And then you have the Southwest Division with Young Harris, who's a one of the newer members of the league after being in the Peach Belt for so long. North Greenville, Southern Wesleyan, Emmanuel, and Erskine. Now, we've highlighted Conference Carolina members in the past. We mentioned Erskine's dramatic come from behind victory a couple of weeks ago. And, of course, Converse, their phenomenal performance by their by their pitcher winning NFCA National Pitcher of the Week honors. For Conference Carolinas, they're going to Get, they're going to continue to get things going for them. Showing will have a doubleheader versus Rollins. Morris Hill will be taking on Belmont Abbey. Barney will take on West Liberty. Erskine will be at Lenore Ryan, top 25 matchup. Francis Marion and Mount Olive will battling in conference play starting today at Mount Olive, North Carolina. Of course, again, Francis Marion, the reigning defending tournament champions. And, er- and Erskine, of course, Lenore Ryan with the double header. Young Harris on Wednesday will have a double header versus West Georgia. Emmanuel travels to take on the defending national champion and number one North Georgia. We'll talk about the polls in just a moment. Showing will go battle Emery Riddle in Orlando. Les McRae will take on Savannah State. And as we evaluate Conference Carolina's going into this season, as we go into conference play, 
Mount Olive, 17 and 5, one of the top offenses in Division II are the Trojans. Francis Marion, 16 and 5. They have the two two of the best records in the league. King in the Northwest, 12 and 5. Belmont Abbey, 7 and 4. Then you got Young Harris, 11 and 7. North Greenville, 12 and 8. Last year with Conference Carolinas, King won the regular season championship. At 18 and 6, Les McRae and Francis Marion came in second and tied a second at 15 and 7. Emmanuel went 15 and 7, and Barnum went 15 and 9. But it was Francis Marion who won the tournament championship and got the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament, which was a phenomenal year for the Patriots, making it back to the postseason. Now, as of for the defending tournament champion, so far we referenced their record. Have some strong, solid victories so far. They swept through the Reigns Company Saltball Classic, beating Kutztown twice and Malloy. They split a doubleheader with Wingate on February 21st. And find themselves, and they beat Lenore Ryan last Wednesday, 1 3 to 1 the first game, locks the second game in extra innings, 6 to 4. And, of course, we mentioned they got Mount Olive to start Conference Carolina's play today. So they have an opportunity for them to defend their conference championship. The Mount Olive doubleheader will go a long way in determining, because remember, with Conference Carolina's, they play home-and-home home, uh, series with the majority of the members in their conference. And then they have the conference tournament, which will be held in Spartanburg, South Carolina, April 25th through the 28th. Now, with Conference Carolinas, it is important to get a top four seed. A top four seed means you get a bye into the double elimination tournament. Five through 12 have to play in a single game win or go home playing game on that Thursday. So not only do you get a bye into the double elimination, but you get to play later on in the day while whoever your potential opponent has to be is battling for their conference tournament and, in some instances, their postseason lives. Now, that's the one thing you have to, that's the one thing we all have to remember with this situation with the conference tournament, especially in the region that Conference Carolinas are in. You have to battle your way through. Not only to, one, qualify for the conference tournament, but two, you have to work to get out of that, to get yourself in a position to make the NCAA tournament. Now, Francis Marion, no surprise, are the conference favorites as conference play will begin today, at least for the, for them. Now, here's the other thing to consider. They advanced to the NCAA tournament for the second consecutive year, won the conference championship, they got seven new faces on the roster, four transfers, three freshmen, but they're helped by the return of all region source star Michaela Cupperson last year, hit for a school record 430 and scored 77 runs. Taylor Watford, who hit 441, 12 homers, 59 RBIs, and Jenna Walling, who went 20 and 4 with the 295 ERA for the defending tournament champions in Conference Carolinas. And the Patriots are picking up right where they left off. Peyton Gale hitting 368, Taylor Watford hitting 346, home runs, 18 RBIs. So she's well on pace to match the total she had from last season. And in the circle, Alyssa Poston, 9-1 with a 2-2-3 ERA, 56 strikeouts, 8 walks, and 66 innings of work. Abby Williams, three or ERA of 3, and Jenna Walling, 7-2 with a 3.77 ERA. So I'm looking forward to seeing Francis Marion and Mount Olive do battle. In conference play, we will provide a recap of that on next episode of D2 Tuesday, as well as some other conferences that we will talk about at length. More details on that on the back end of this episode. Now, before we get to the top 25 that came out earlier this afternoon, we do want to Show some love to a couple of teams who used the long ball in historic fashion over the weekend. First, Rogers State broke a single game home run record in their dominant doubleheader sweep over Rockhurst. They won the first game in five innings, 16 nothing, 
and smashed six home runs in the game. It was I when I read that I was like, wow. The fact that he had done it, hit five home runs on five separate occasions since 2009, and then they set the record with six in that victory. It was unbelievable. It was the third inning where they did it. They hit five home runs in that inning alone. It was back to it was three straight home runs from Paxton Donaldson, Abby Rogers, and Callie Yellen, who hit two of the six home runs, and also. They got a home run from Kaylee Lyon, who got the home run going. And then they finished off the game of run with fashion with two more runs in the fourth to get the 16-0 victory. And then in game two, picked up right where they left off. They scored seven runs in the first. Lana Gaz hit a solo home run to left. And the party kept going from there as the Hillcats were dominating that victory 24 nothing in the two games of the doubleheader. They return to Lone Star action tomorrow. They got to they actually return back to action tomorrow in non-conference play versus Texas women's first pitch set for 2 p.m. Central Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Meanwhile, in Columbus, Georgia, Columbus State set a single game record themselves in terms of the long ball as they beat Georgia College State 13 to 5. They hit seven home runs in that victory over Peach Belt over the Peach Belt opponent. The previous record for them was six, which they set back on April 18, 2015, versus Flagler. Brooke Miller, Nova Wright, each with two home runs. Grace Kaiser, Laura Harris, and Caitlin Kennedy, each with the home run in that seven home run performance for Columbus State. Wright went two for three with five home runs, while Miller had her two home runs and four RBIs in that victory. So the long ball utilized in excess this weekend in the Division II side with Rogers State and Columbus State, both standing single-game home run records for their respective schools. And on that note, folks, it's time to talk about the latest NFCA Top 25 coaches poll. No real surprise in terms of the top two, North Georgia remains number one, but are no longer the unanimous number one team in the nation. They received 15 of the 16 first place votes after sweeping their after sweeping their way versus USC Aiken. The other first place vote went to West Texas AM. The Lady Buffs became the first D2 team to reach 20 wins on the season. They are now winners of 16 straight after they swept a pair of series versus Midwestern State and Texas women's outscoring their opponents 59-8. to eight. So Michael Mook and company looking prime for another run at the national title. Roger State, who we just mentioned previously, jumped up to the number three spot. Three of their four wins coming by way of shout-out. Of course, we referenced their school record home run barrage that they had last weekend versus Rockhurst, also swept Missouri S&T. Tampa which got stunned in conference play, losing two out of three to Palm Beach Atlantic, fell only one spot to number four. Grand Valley State, number five. UT Tyler's at six. Cal State San Marcos, who had the week off, they're at seven. U of Indy is at number eight. Colorado Christian jumps up to nine. And Mississippi College returns back to the top ten at number ten. We went out of Gulf South play, shut out Arkansas Monticello. Uh, to take care of business. West Alabama, who was in the top 10 last week, fell three spots to number 13 after being swept by Auburn, after being swept by AUM. Wingate jumps up three more spots. The Bulldogs are now number 11, winners of seven straight and 17 of their last 18, coming off a pair of doubleheader sweeps versus Georgian Court and Virginia Y. Central Oklahoma, the Broncos remain city at number 12. We mentioned West Alabama dropping to 13. Western Washington moves up two spots to number 14. Jamie Wallback and East Stroudsburg, they move up two spots to number 15. Pittsburgh State, the Gorillas, continuing their best start in program history. They also jump up prepared to number 16, as does Charleston. They are currently in Florida. Michelle Fruin Company, 11-1 of the season. They swept 
the Mountain East Conference Awards that were announced on Monday. They are now number 17. St. Leo at number 18. Nova Southeastern falls from 15 to 19 after being swept by Rollins College. Ashley Worrell with a phenomenal performance against the South Region champions. Wilmington took the biggest tumble in the poll, jump going from number 11 to number 20. And if you recall, during our D2 Day special, we talked to head coach Mike Shehorn, and he referenced the tough stretch that they were going to have in Florida. And so far, that has gone to fruition. The Wilmington program 3-5 and five in a trip to Florida, including losing a pair of tough games in walk-off fashion versus Embry-Riddle. Northwest Nazarene moves up to number 21. They flip spots with Southern Arkansas, who was at 22. Lenore Ryan moves up two spots to number 23. Concordia holds steady at number 24. And Angelo State rounds out the top 25. So no changes in terms of the NFCA poll. Washburn, Ohio Dominican, Cal State Dominguez Hills, Francis Marion, and Auburn Montgomery, the other programs receiving votes in this week's poll. Now, Auburn Montgomery, I am fully, fully convinced that they listened to D2 Tuesday. They heard my talking about the uh, start that Mississippi College and West Alabama had, and uh, Scotty Wilkes cooked that a little bit seriously as all they did was put a dominant performance versus West Alabama and very quietly, ladies and gentlemen, Auburn Montgomery, 15 and 5 on a year, winners of five in a row, seven and one at home. They shut out and run rule West Alabama 10 to nothing in the first game of the series. They played a doubleheader on Saturday. They squeaked out the second game four to three, won down on a walk-off, and then won a slug vest versus West Alabama Sunday afternoon, 14 to 9 to cap off the sweep. Now they go to Rome, Georgia to take on Shorter. And then next Tuesday at 12 noon, they will host number one North Georgia. So a big weekend for Coach Scotty Wilkes and her ball club. Matter of fact, the next two Tuesdays, they're going to have some significant doubleheaders. North Georgia, we reference next weekend, two weekend, two Tuesdays from now, they will travel to Columbus, Georgia to take on the Columbus State Cougars. And then Wednesday, April 3rd, they host Alabama Huntsville. So depending on how AUM performs, we may have uh, Coach Wilkes uh, make an appearance here on D2 Tuesday. And the thing about Auburn Montgomery, the series that we mentioned started with the victory versus West Alabama. They got the walk-off home run from Gia Martin, who was a huge part of their victory last weekend, that series victory versus Mississippi College. And she started things off again, picking up, getting the walk-off home run in the seventh. Uh, AUM actually trailed four to nothing, three to nothing after the top of the fifth. They got two runs back at the bottom of the fifth, and they set the stage for the Martin home run in the seventh inning. Avery Dickerson picked up the victory. Four hits, three runs, one walk, five strikeouts in game one of that series. And then the wild, of, and that was game two of the series. They run ruled West Alabama game one, 10 to nothing. And then they had a back and forth affair in the final game where there were runs scored in every inning except the seven. West Alabama jumped out first, two to nothing. AUM scored five in the first. West Alabama picked up a run back to cut the deficit to five to three. AUM picked up three more, made it eight to three. The Tigers got three more runs and made it eight to six, picked up another run back to make it eight to seven. And then AUM exploded for a five run forfeit to make it 13 to seven. They picked up a picked up the extra point to make it 14 to seven. West Alabama got two runs back in the six. It proved to be a little bit too much as AUM jumped out to a 14 to nine victory. 23 runs, 26 hits. And it was a wild ball game for both of these programs. Chloe Baines were AU1, four for five, three run score. Molly Cobb, two for four, four RBIs, had a three run home run in the second inning as a part of that to extend that lead 
for AUM. Margaret Morgan, two for four. She drove in four. And the had seven different pitchers come on in this game. But it was Sydney Free who picked up the win. She was probably the most effective pitcher of the staff for AUM. Two and a third. Gave up seven hits, but only allowed two runs. And that really kind of set the stage for AUM to pick up the victory and the subsequent sweep of West Alabama, the then 10th ranked team in the nation. So that's going to put a bow for this week on D2 Tuesday. A lot of things going on in the spring games. We'll talk about that on next week's show. Now stay tuned, folks. We're going to... So that's going to put a bow for this edition of Day... Yeah. That will put a bow for this edition of D2 Tuesday. Not as long as we usually go today. We're mapping out trying to get some interviews with some coaches uh, for the segment as we really get into the thick of the Division II schedule and, of course, conference plays starting throughout the continental United States. Of course, our friends at Simon Fraser in Canada and Hawaii as well. So we're going to talk about those conferences. And what we're going to do on D2 Tuesday before we sign off, we're going to tweak the format just a little bit. We're still going to talk about the top 25 uh, at the end of the show, but we're also going to talk about specific conferences during each episode of D2 Tuesday all the way up through the end of the regular season and into the postseason. So what we'll do is we will make the announcement of what conferences we'll be talking about. And we're going to talk about every D2 conference now up until the end of the season. So make sure you stay tuned and we will talk announce probably during the weekend which conferences that we're going to be talking about for that particular D2 Tuesday Highlight some of the matchups that took place that previous weekend. And who knows, maybe we may have an interview with the coach of a conference or we have an interview already scheduled with a coach that will impact which conferences we will be talking about at length on that particular episode. But we, as always, appreciate you listening to us. We always appreciate you following us on our podcast. We are certainly humbled by your support. We appreciate your support. Make sure you follow the podcast wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to turn on your notifications. That way you don't miss any episodes of D2 Tuesday. So for this particular episode, my name is Victor Anderson. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of D2 Tuesday right here exclusively on the Inner Circle YouTube channel. Top podcaster out. Good night, Canada.